thank you. Uh, it's been a while I've been in Prague. Actually, this was also the first stop of my uh, trip here in Prague in Parallel Polis. Um, I, I give the talk because blockchain is uh, so hot right now. I give the talk uh, real virtuality blockchain. So uh, it's a play on words of uh, virtual reality. And now we have virtual currencies which we use in real life, but that's not going to be the case. I'm not going to say blockchain one more time. <laughs> um, instead, I'm going to talk about the 365 days trip I tried to do um, around the world. A um, little bit how I got into Bitcoin. I, um, we all maybe remember 2007, the financial crisis, so-called meltdown, which was initiated by the meltdown of uh, Lehman Brothers, the fifth largest US bank. Maybe it was in force, I, I don't really remember. Yeah, but a lot of people lost a lot of money and uh, the banks basically took down the whole um, economy and uh, the US Congress basically pushed in just one month a package, a bailout package of $700 billion. Just for comparison, um, Bill Gates created one of the biggest companies in the world, uh, changed millions of lives and he took four years to get a 40 or 60 billion dollar um, uh, net worth and the Congress just passed like in one month at uh, 10 times as much money as of like nothing. I mean, it was obviously very uh, crazy times and then uh, in 2009 Satoshi started the uh, Bitcoin, yeah, no, I have to say the word, uh, blockchain <laughs> and um, this is actually the headline he put into the first block as a proof that this was started at or not uh, earlier than uh, January 3rd, 2009. Um, a little about me, I'm a freelance programmer. Um, I was always pretty much interested in cryptography, hiding messages, like I remember when I was in primary school and I wanted to communicate with my uh, friend who was sitting on the other bank and I didn't want to somebody asked to read the messages we were passing, so I invented invented some cipher. Uh, basically, we just moved some letters in the alphabet, um, which is known as Caesar cipher, but like, uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, I studied computer science and economics at the height pretty much in 2008 in Cologne. And uh, I was a little bit like, I didn't know what to do because 50% uh, of what I was just learning in in university proved, was proven wrong by the, by the meltdown of the financial crisis. <laughs> and I didn't really know if I should continue my, my studies or not. Um, um, I discovered Bitcoin in 2012. Um, well, currency, no banks, well, that sounds like a great idea. And that's how I fell down the rabbit hole. Um, at the end of 2014 then, um, the basic theme was that was too fast. What happens now? <coughs> yeah, so Bitcoin is dead. Nobody uses Bitcoin. It was a failed experiment. Um, yeah, all these headlines, everybody wrote one. I think even my current did one. Um, and I, did, I knew that this wasn't true, so I, um, this is not working. So yeah, the goal was to, to basically prove that it is actually possible to use Bitcoin in daily life uh, and not be dependent on banks. Um, because again, in the system, uh, because the, the, the the reason why all these bailout packages were pushed through was like, oh, banks are systemic, like we cannot live without banks, like they're too big to fail was a very famous quote back then. Um, so I, I gave myself a couple of rules. Um, the first one is uh, Bitcoin first. So, whoops. So many, technically. Hello? Hello? Okay. Uh, Bitcoin first, so pay for everything with Bitcoin. Uh, if they don't accept it yet, try to convince them, which was actually very easy when I came first to Prague because here in the Bitcafe you can only pay with Bitcoin. 
Um, the second is obviously no banks. That means no Western Union, no money exchanger, no fiat uh, to fiat. So it cannot exchange euros for check rounds, funds, and things like that. And the only way to get cash, because I knew I wouldn't be able to pay everything with Bitcoin, and sometimes uh, even if I tried hard, it just didn't work. Uh, so I allowed myself to have cash. But the only way to get cash is by doing peer-to-peer -peer trades with people I met in the different countries. Okay, I'm gonna play a little video, so maybe it, it's a little less abstract what I'm talking about. Hi, my name is Felix. Today I'm in Fethiye, to be more precise, in Erdenis, which is a small town in Turkey, which not only has a beautiful beach, but it's very famous for paragliding. That's what I want to do today. But I want to pay with Bitcoin. Who is winning? Me. So I started an experiment. I want to travel around the world for one year only using Bitcoin. How does that work, you might ask? I converted all my money to Bitcoin. And I started traveling. Um, I wonder if I can book a paragliding flight with you. You could do that, yes. And well, what kind of payment do you accept? We could get every kind of a payment. Is okay. yes. Credit cards, foreign currency, Turkish. Yeah. And what about Bitcoin? Bitcoin? Bitcoin. Bitcoin, I've heard about it, but I don't think it is uh, on the market. I have never seen a Bitcoin. Um, I have a question. Have you heard about Bitcoin? Bitcoin. Bitcoin. No. What mean? Yeah. Do you accept also Bitcoin? Bitcoin? Bitcoin. What is that? It's a digital currency. I've never seen such kind of currency. No? I cannot use an ATM. And I cannot use a credit card. In fact, I even cut my credit card. So, if you haven't heard about Bitcoin, it's decentralized digital currency. It's the first money that doesn't rely on a central bank. What is Bitcoin? With Bitcoin, you can pay anybody in the world within seconds. Yes, I did it. For the bitcoins. How first it? bitcoin flight ever. Yes, first time is best time, guys. Are you feeling? Uh, what you feeling? I'm a little bit nervous. Nervous. Yes. nervous. It's good. It's good. But I'm excited too. Yeah. It'll be great. Yes, great. See you later in the sky, guys. Say goodbye. Thanks for watching the video. If you like more, subscribe. Maybe I will post more videos in the future. And see you soon. All right, that was the video. Video of three minutes. In reality, it obviously took two or three days to convince these people to accept Bitcoin. Um, so what are some tools if somebody wanted to reproduce my results uh, would I recommend it to you to use? So the first of all, obviously uh, CoinMap. Uh, it's basically a website where all businesses are listed except Bitcoin, local businesses, uh, restaurants, grocery stores. Um, if you want to, if you have a business and you want to get some Bitcoin and you don't want to buy them, you don't know how to mine, the easiest way is just offer your services or products in Bitcoin and you can 
put your ad on this website for free and other Bitcoiners will be able to find you. Um, Cheap Air, they take Bitcoin and I think Litecoin and Dogecoin uh, since 2013 for almost all flights. Uh, Expedia, you can book your hotels in almost any country. And then finally, um, last but not least, local Bitcoins, a very great community to find other people um, for cash trades where you can buy and sell Bitcoins with them. Uh, this is the result. I was on the way for 18 months in total and um, pretty much one time all around the globe. Um, and today I'm going to talk about uh, three stops. Um, one in Athens, one in Yap Island and one in uh, Venezuela, Caracas. And uh, Prague, because we're in Prague. So um, this is actually my first. It was my first stop on my tour. I um, booked a interval ticket uh, on all for BTC, um, paid with Bitcoin, to because I didn't know like what I was, what I was getting into at all, right? So uh, at least I wanted to have like a free passage all across Europe. So if it goes totally wrong, at least I can somehow come home. Uh, because I didn't have a credit card with me. Uh, I mean, I had it in the beginning, but I did never use it. And if I had to use it, I would have obviously been cheating. Um, so uh, with the interval ticket, I came to Prague and I was very, very surprised how well developed Bitcoin is here and uh, with the Polonese, Polonese uh, Bitcoffee, uh, Paper Hub, all accepting Bitcoin. Um, the not so funny thing is, uh, I did convert all my savings into Bitcoin on January, early January, and the day I arrived in Prague, the price of Bitcoin tanked 20%. So I said, okay, cool, not 12 months, but only nine months. Uh, um, but luckily it, it uh, recovered after that. Uh, I immediately also went to Satoshi Labs to buy my treasure because now I have the, my bitcoins and I don't want to lose them to hackers and kind of stuff. And the easiest way to do that is obviously with a hardware wallet. Uh, and since I didn't want to, uh, since I don't trust the postman, um, so maybe somebody might tamper with it in the mail. I bought it in person from Slush. Um, yeah. And then I, uh, on the first day or the second day, I don't remember exactly when it was. Um, I went out to find the first restaurant where I can pay with Bitcoin and I found on CoinMag I found one and then I looked and uh, I went down the street and uh, I thought okay cool, um, it must be here but I was surprised there was no Bitcoin sign or anything like that. So, But I went inside and then um, the owner of the shop was sitting behind uh, his laptop and I said can I pay here with Bitcoin and he just looked at me and like Bitcoin what? No, you cannot pay with Bitcoin. Um, and then I was uh, kind of surprised because like, look, I found you listed here on CoinMap and why don't you accept Bitcoin? And I said, uh, no, uh, this is the other side of the road. <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty sure I know the owner, you cannot pay there with Bitcoin. Um, and uh, then I went there and actually I could pay at, at U3 with Bitcoin and uh, he was jokingly saying to me, if you can pay there with Bitcoin, um, I will give you a free coffee. Um, then I, I showed him that I was able, actually able to pay with Bitcoin uh, for my first meal and I went back and I said, okay, I don't want a free coffee, but I want you to accept Bitcoin and I'm going to uh, order a dessert here with you. And he said, okay. So I set him up with a wallet and that was my first or second day with Bitcoin, already convincing one merchant uh, that was success. <laughs> um, Obviously, it wasn't always like that, but that was uh, quite easy. Okay, now I'm going to talk about Athens. Uh, it's not that long ago, a uh, little bit more than a year, that in Greece there was the so-called Grexit. Um, the banks were busy much closed and nobody could access their money. Um, you basically had a withdrawal limit of 60 euros a day. Uh, a lot of riots going on, obviously. Um, the national debt was over 200% of the GDP and the uh, international wire transfers were forbidden. So even if you had some money saved up, like almost every middle class family there, um, you couldn't wire it out or out of the country and like nobody knew, are we going to go back to the drachma? Is everybody going to get a 30% haircut? And usually people choose 
themselves when they want to go to the barbers. But um, in this case, it was not the case. So I thought maybe that's uh, actually a good showcase for Bitcoin because in Bitcoin there is no bank. You are the bank, right? So nobody can tell you what and what not to do with your money. Nobody can uh, freeze it or uh, prohibit you from doing international or national wire transfers. Um, so I went there and I met uh, with Nikos. Nikos is running the um, uh, restaurant in Athens since 2012, uh, accepting Bitcoin. Um, and I saw the first Bitcoin ATM there um, and used it. So we did it with uh, Nikos because it was obviously very big in the news at the time. A lot of people had a lot of questions, so I did a uh, Reddit AMA with uh, Nikos. It's still there. Maybe some interesting questions pop up or historically interesting, maybe. Um, I especially like the first question. Since 2012, congrats. Do many people come and pay with Bitcoin? And Nikos answers. There were around six to eight people to pay with Bitcoin from Spain, France, Italy, Ireland, Luxembourg, but I hope for more people to come. And some again says, wow, that's almost two a year. I mean, it's early days. What do you want? Um, okay, and then some company thought, okay, that might, uh, some company that produces Bitcoin ATMs, so that's actually a good idea to promote our product. And they went there, and then we took actually out of the Bitcoin ATM 120, which is double the uh, for commercially banks allowed amount of withdrawal for people a day. I mean, technically there was no real limit, um, but we showed like how we can withdraw more than the 60 years of this health. Um, Bitcoin users are not affected. So I thought there needs to be more aw awareness about Bitcoin and we printed some flyers um, we, um, and informed some people who were at the protests. Uh, we even printed a huge uh, Bitcoin QR code because everybody who wants to go to a demonstration needs some kind of sign, right? So uh, we took a Bitcoin logo with a QR code. That's actually a Bitcoin address, which uh, is now owned by the Greek uh, Bitcoin meetup group. And we collected over one and a half Bitcoin, I think, in just a couple of days. And that uh, w um, was given to the Bitcoin meetup group, which now informs people in Greece and Athens particularly uh, about Bitcoin and how they can use it for themselves. Um, this is my friend Eric standing in front of the Greek parliament protesting with Bitcoin. I like this one also very much. Uh, this is actually the youngest person uh, I found uh, in Greece also I traded with. He's only 15 years old and he wanted to trade some Bitcoin with me. I don't know how he know about Bitcoin and what he does with it, but I just found it funny that even very young uh, kids already wanted to use it. Yeah, that was about Greece. Uh, now I'm going to talk about Yap. Quick uh, hand raise, maybe. Who knows where Yap is? One guy, okay. And who... Um, so it's here. Um, down here in Australia, in the Philippines, and it's like a super, super small island in like the middle of nowhere. Um, and um, it's really, really small. Only 10,000 people live there. And the closest island is 200 miles, 300 kilometers away. And for many centuries, these people on the island, the indigenes, used a very special kind of money. Does anybody know what that was? One, two, okay, we've got three. So, if you do a quick Google search and you type in EU money, what kind of stuff they use there? Oh, that's actually not correct because there's also non euro Eurozone. Okay, anyway, in the Eurozone, what do they use? Um, you see the Euro, and then you have the, in the US, you have the US dollar, and if you type in Yap Island money, you see this. These people actually have the biggest money in the world. They use huge stones, um, usually bigger than a, than, a, than a person, with a bit of a hole in the middle. And um, the, since these stones, uh, this interesting backstory about that is they don't actually come from uh, Yap themselves, because uh, otherwise, how would you know if it's uh, real or fake money? Um, so. What, how, what happened is the, the, the chief of the island, um, they went to Palau to, I don't know, do vacation and then with like small boats. 
And since they didn't want to come home empty-handed to, the, to their wives, uh, they started carving out stones out of some special rock, uh, special limestone which glitters um, on, on the island of Palau. And then they came, they, and then they came back and uh, brought these uh, stones back to the island. And slowly but surely, there were suddenly a lot of stones on the island, and they were very easy to recognize, and they were they became valuable because they were very scarce. And they started using a lot of money. Uh, obviously, the stones were too heavy to every time when somebody uh, bought a house or changed owner of something else, like did some trade to move them. So they basically didn't move the stones, they just like um, taught everybody else in the network or on the island that now this person is the new owner. Which works a little bit like uh, the Bitcoin blockchain where you basically just, the Bitcoins aren't in your phone. In your phone it's just the private key to send a message to which you broadcast to everybody else that you are now the new owner or this person is now the new owner of the Bitcoin. Um, then there were, I think in 2012 or 2013, uh, a couple of articles where they somebody tried to uh, explain Bitcoin and, and uh, the parallels to this stone money. Um, so I went there and um, another thing which is very nice is like you can do a lot of nice diving there. And uh, my divers, uh, di diver teacher uh, in the top, uh, I convinced her actually to accept 20% uh, of the pay in, in Bitcoin. So she's the first APs uh, over to own some Bitcoin on the island. Uh, this is the biggest stone. Um, I put a little one dollar note there to comparison, so it's, it's quite huge. Um, the interesting part is that stone just came to the island in the early 19th or 20th century. Um, and, and it actually uh, is also the pretty much the last stone that came to the island. Because what happened is um, the colonial mites came to the island and they wanted to trade with the uh, Yapese people, and but the, the, the Spanish and the Germans, they just had uh, um, silver coins and gold coins and they they couldn't really do anything with that. These small rocks, well, what do I care about that, right? So we like big rocks. So the Germans said, okay, no problem. We have big ships here. We can get a lot of like of these big stones from Palau to your island, no problem. And in the beginning they said, oh, cool. Yeah, okay, let's trade, let's do that. But then they did it and did it and did it and then suddenly there were so many stones on the island that they were no longer scarce and no longer valuable. So you had basically a stone inflation on the island. So it doesn't matter what your money is, if you can't inflate it, it's not worth it. Um, if you're interested in the history of money, I can recommend a very good article by Nick Sabo, um, the guy who also coined the term smart contracts, uh, shutting out your original money, just Google it and you will find the article immediately. And the last stop I'm going to talk to you about is uh, Venezuela, where I was in May 2016. Um, where now Venezuela has one of the biggest inflations in the world. Uh, the IMF predicts 500% inflation. Um, but I still decided to go there uh, to like see it because I know inflation, hyperinflation, just from history books and economic books, and like, w w what does it actually is feel like when you live in a society like that? So, um, and I um, actually some guys from Venezuela when they wrote about some news stories uh, in Spanish about my trip, they contacted me and uh, invited me. So I said, okay, even though it's maybe risky. Uh, Caracas has the highest homicide rate right now in the world of, I think, 2000 or a couple of years ago was 9,000 homicides in a city of 2 million people, so that's quite a lot. Um, but I still went and um, they were very, very welcoming, the Bitcoin people there I met. Um, they immediately helped me to uh, exchange uh, some Bitcoin. This is uh, the amount of, I think, 80 euros. And Venezuelan money. Um, the biggest bill, the 100, used to be a couple of years ago around 30 years. So this used to be like, I don't know, um, maybe three, four thousand euros, and now it's like uh, one bill is eight cents. 
that's 80 euros. Um, nonetheless, we um, enjoyed the, the, the islands there and had some good days at the beach. Um, we also, like for every good Bitcoiner, went to eat some pizza. Unfortunately, this place didn't accept Bitcoin, but and also I didn't have to pay 10,000 Bitcoins. Um, but I said I have to pay 10,000 uh, Bolivar. And how um, this looks like if you pay a pizza with 10,000 Bolivar, So you see, now I'm counting the money. Usually counting money makes more fun. In this case, it's, it's, it's very annoying. That's 1,000. So it's 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 really like for the local population, it's 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 a total mess, right? The the money system is is uh, is is totally gone. Like um, there's even um, a premium on cash because uh, if 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 you have the money in the bank, it might be frozen tomorrow or not. So people try to keep cash, but they really don't want the cash because it's like well, nothing. You have to have like. For any meaningful amount, you have to have come up with like bags, and like it's super impractical. Um, the nonetheless, you 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 can see that a lot of uh, people uh, there use uh, Bitcoin as a. Of, of course, they would prefer like something like the dollar or um, uh, the euro or any any other. Um, hard currency, um, the problem is they cannot get their hands on it because no tourist right now wants to go to Venezuela and that's no physical cash comes into the country. Um, the official exchange rate would be 100 Venezuelan Bolivar to $10, but as you said, uh, this if that would be the case, then uh, this pizza would have cost me um, um, yeah, $1,000. Not the case. Um, so we visited some some miners, and um, they 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 basically use the only real benefit of living in Venezuela right now is that you don't have to pay for electricity. That's like social benefit. Um, so what you do if you have free electricity and you can use electricity to, to run computers which create money for you by mining? Well, obviously that's what you do. So. Um, at the same time, you have a market for this thing because the, you have the people who want to hedge against the inflation. And um, so these are GPU miners. Obviously, you don't mine Bitcoin with GPUs anymore, but these people are mining Ethereum and then uh, selling it for Bitcoin. Um, for uh, This is a picture of in front of a supermarket. You can even see there's an army guy making sure that everything goes right because like they don't have anything in the supermarket. There's no milk for weeks. There's no uh, toilet paper. It's 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 really really bad. Um, this is a rayon. Um, you can see there's a lot of stuff missing. Uh, nonetheless, the Bitcoin people I met there, they, they seem to have a good time. <laughs> um, because you you also have to think about this. Um, in Venezuela, the minimum wage is twenty twenty five US dollars a month. Um, they have this food stamps kind of thing or food extra, so nobody has nobody has to starve in theory at least. Um, and now you have a machine which produces only about ten, twenty dollars a month worth of Bitcoin for you. So that's actually a minimum wage, right? So if I have three machines, I have three minimum wages. Um, these machines usually are old machines that are not profitable anymore in the West. Um, they basically get shipped to Venezuela. If you don't want to use them in your museum of Bitcoin miners, they have no real use. Uh, if you have to pay 10 cents per kilowatt hour or something like that. But in, since in Venezuela you don't pay anything and uh, electricity is free and um, the, um, 
the, the money is worth something. So uh, the, the, the mining is still very decentralized, as you can see. This is like uh, um, um, two miners, like right next to somebody's bed in, in his dorm. Um, oops. Um, and then we went to a, um, a supermarket of a friend of these Bitcoin people and we actually convinced them to accept Bitcoin. So then there are now two small grocery stores that accept Bitcoin. And um, I also bought some Kellogg's. The problem is, which I didn't think about at the moment when I bought the Kellogg's, there's no milk. So you <laughs> I wasn't able to eat the Kellogg's, so they had to prepare some milk for me with milk powder. Um, yeah. Um, we, we, we did a, a quick excursion to some uh, Venezuelan waterfalls. Uh, these are all Bitcoin people or miners. Um, yeah, this uh, this guy is uh, he he's also a pilot and he did show me his mining rigs and, and stuff like that, which was quite interesting to see. And the last day, uh, unfortunately, my power bank went busto, or I think it like got a little bit of too much of the water from the waterfall. I don't know. Anyway, a power bank is super essential if you uh, travel, um, as many of you know. And so I had to get a new one. And we were actually able to find in Caracas an electronics store, and they accept Bitcoin. So uh, I bought a new power bank there with Bitcoin. All right, um, that's it for Venezuela. Um, now some numbers, uh, 18 months, 27 countries, 50 cities, 5 continents, eight, over 800 on-chain Bitcoin transactions. Um, I traded Bitcoin for 19 different uh, fiat currencies. Um, and with over 60 different people. And banks needed was uh, zero. So my conclusion, um, many people say Bitcoin is the money of the future. I think it's the money of today already um, because you are able to use it in all these countries. Um, lots of opportunities ahead, um, but also of course lots of obstacles. Scaling is just one. Um, uh, technical details are super fascinating about Bitcoin. I mean, I'm a programmer, so. But the best part about Bitcoin is really the community. If, if I didn't met all these people, this would not have been possible. I mean, they were super helpful um, getting me around and helping me to find, uh, yeah, basically everything, food um, and somewhere to sleep. Um, yeah. Um, a lot of people say uh, Bitcoin is great for banking the unbanked. I think that's a noble goal, um, but I would also say let's unbank the rest of us because we don't need banks anymore. We have Bitcoin now. And that's my conclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I would like to ask one question mm. about uh, the accommodation. Uh, have you used uh, also about Oh, couchsurfing? Yeah, yeah. I, I used uh, couchsurfing, I used um, um, Expedia, I used uh, just like some people are connected to via um, the Bitcoin Reddit and, and, and Twitter and, and all that kind of thing. So I, I used pretty much everything in between. And have you convinced them? Say again? For example, Couchsurfers, have you convinced yes. them to use Bitcoins? Well, the idea of Couchsurfing is basically Airbnb for free, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, but but well, if somebody uh, hosted me, I wrote to my story what I was doing and they, uh, they thought, oh, I, I don't care, or oh, that's interesting. And then uh, if they hosted me, I just gave them a tip in Bitcoin just to show them how it works because like, I, I can almost never stop talking about Bitcoin. So. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, are there any questions? Yeah. Hi, Felix. Uh, how did you choose the places that you were going to? Was it planned from the beginning or did you meet people? Or I, had, I had a couple um, stops I wanted to see, uh, depending on Bitcoin and non-on Bitcoin. Um, Venezuela was very long on my list. I was, uh, just until the very end, I wasn't very sure because it's, it's very dangerous there. Like, uh, if they know you are a tourist, they might like just abduct you and like extort some money from your family. Um, so I, without these people, I would never have gone there. Um, then I wanted to see Japan 
maybe looking for Satoshi Nakamoto there. I didn't find him. Um, I wanted always to see Israel and Palestine, but that was not so much Bitcoin related. That was more like because you hear so much about the news in it, and then want to have my own um, my own view about that. Um, I, in general, I had maybe a couple. Uh, I was also in Vienna, um, where I met the guys from uh, Mycelium. Doesn't work. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I would say there were like six or seven different stops I had pre programmed pretty much, and then the rest was like, okay, where is at least somebody uh, on CoinMap um, or local Bitcoins or anything like that? I was even uh, able to manage to go to uh, Cuba, which I have never ever thought I could be able to do, um, but I, I, I went on. Um, I went on local bitcoins and I found an ad of a guy on Cuba in Havana who, who wanted to buy a bitcoin. And I thought like why would you ever need bitcoin on an island where less than 5% of the population have access to internet? Why do you need an internet currency there? Um, but and, and, and I thought like that was a fake, somebody was making a joke or something like that. But it was actually true and, and I contacted him and said uh, can you get me from the airport and we couldn't do a trade and I said, yeah, sure, no problem. And uh, he also hosted me for this couple of days uh, in his flat, so it was, was very nice. I paid him in Bitcoin too. Um, yeah, but other than that, just where I found at least one Bitcoiner, otherwise I don't think it would have been possible. Any questions? Uh, hey, uh, did you make any research about the country when you uh, went to? So before you went to, in the country, you did you make some research if you can uh, buy something in the Bitcoin in the country, or you just went in the country and say, okay, I am here. I have to find some people who, okay, or place uh, when when I can can buy something with the Bitcoin. Yeah, uh, in the beginning I did a lot of research always before I went to a new country um, because yeah, I, uh, if I didn't want to break any one of my rules then uh, I, um, as you said uh, as you said before I, I, I cut my credit card so that after Turkey there was no going back right so I had to somehow get around. Um, research took a lot of the time also traveling and if you like I don't know beach, vacation, all-inclusive hotel and stuff like that, don't do it on Bitcoin. <laughs> There's a lot of work involved with it and uh, I was also many times just like thinking why am I doing this at all, like this has no sense. <laughs> um, like it, it's, it was a lot of work. And one of the issues is also why um, after one year, the idea was one year, 21 countries, I was only at number 17. And that also was because I was very slow with my travels. Because once I was established in a country, by established I mean I know, okay, here I can exchange some bitcoins for cash, there I can buy some rest uh, food in a restaurant in, for bitcoin. Um, you, you tend to get lazy and say, okay, if I have to go to the next country, I have to find all that stuff out again. And so that's why I was only at level 17 uh, uh, after one year. Um, but yeah, in the end, it's uh, it was uh, it was I think what was it? I, I, I learned a lot about the world, Bitcoin, the people inside it of it, and yes, I'm, I'm glad I did it. Well, thanks very much for this nice presentation. First, um, my question is: whenever you try to convince, for example, a small business to use Bitcoin, uh, what solution did you propose to them? Was it just a normal wallet or uh, some hardware devices? 
Um, it usually depended a lot on the amount of the uh, transaction. So, for instance, when I bought my um, my uh, diver's license in Turkey, and it's something a little bit more expensive over a couple of uh, uh, transactions also. So I set them up like with a Turkish exchange um, because they, they wanted to get fiat out. Um, I said, okay, no problem. As long as I can pay in Bitcoin, I'm fine. i show you how to get fiat out. Um, that was a pretty custom solution, um, but in general, I just set them up like with either Mycelium Copay or something like that, uh, a mobile wallet on their phone. Something which I also quite often did, I, I met people during my travels and then uh, we went for dinner and then I told them about Bitcoin and they thought it interesting and then uh, I said, to them, okay, um, here's an offer, uh, you pay for my food and I pay you back in Bitcoin. Uh, and that's how they got their first Bitcoin, that's the easiest way to get some coins and they can experience it. Okay, I guess it's last question. Uh, you've, you, you stopped your travel in July this year. What are your plans in the near future if you're not traveling anymore? Uh, um, I think I'm gonna travel soon again. Right now, right now I'm pretty broke because such a travel is not free, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I have a couple ideas which I got on my tour, uh, what to do with Bitcoin, how to actually leverage the features of Bitcoin, which I think a lot of people don't really do right now. I mean, being it's so global, uh, borderless, border agnostic money, it, it's uh, a lot of things are not... Uh, I'm, I think we, if, if we want to find more business models, we need to focus on the strengths of Bitcoin. Uh, it's not easy, I think, but yeah, once I, I did that, I think I'm going to travel again maybe Africa, there was not many places in Africa I visited yet, or again Asia, I liked it a lot in Asia. Okay, thank you very much thank for your presentation. Much. Thank you. Please give an applause.